Hey, how's it going? It's Pastor Chris, man. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. It's going to be a midweek motivation. We're going to take your life to a whole other level. I appreciate you taking the time and joining me tonight. We've been on our series of reigning in life, and we've been kind of getting into, you know, the name of Jesus, and we've been talking on the weekends what this name means, how we respond to the name, what the name produces. We've been looking at being an heir, and then if you're an heir, Kind of went like this, we're a son, and then sonship and children of God gave us a revelation of who we are, and that gave us access to being an heir. And he said, you're an heir of everything, everything God has, everything God owns, everything God is. And then we start seeing we're supposed to walk in this lordship of dominion. So you have like the believer's authority, and then you have the authority of the Son, the authority in Jesus' name. So there's a lot of components moving. And tonight I just want to talk to you a little bit more about that air airship. You know, I don't even know if that's a... It sounds so weird when you say it. Like the airship of Christ. You know what I mean? It sounds like we're riding in a plane. But the airship is a, a position you've been given. And we're going to walk this thing out. And we're going to keep diving into this. Uh, I think the most important thing we could realize is that faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. So the more we keep hearing about the subject, the more we keep seeing, the easier it's going to be to receive um, the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's offering time. I know you're excited about it. I'm excited about it. Go to Philippians 4.19 and check this scripture out. But my God shall supply all of your need. Okay, now that word need, when you look at it in the Greek, it's more than just needs. It's wants and needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So God wants to take care of your needs. He wants to take care of your wants according to his wealth, not yours. If you can get a revelation of that, it'll change your life. Because a lot of times we think, I don't have the resources to do this. He does. I don't have the ability to come up with that kind of money. He does. I don't have the ability to pay my bills. He does. I don't have that kind of resource pool. He does. But my God shall supply all your needs. Now, this was the reward of the giver. Because in Philippians chapter 4, Paul was basically saying, I had a need, and you guys gave to help me. And because you helped me in the gospel, the work of the gospel, God is going to reward you. So the rewarder of the supply is God Almighty. For who? the giver. So the only requirement is that we give. The only requirement is that we tithe and give offerings. So today as you tithe and give your offering, know that God is ready to meet your needs. That's one of the greatest things me and you can think of. It's not in our um, not in our ability. It's in his. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you'll get behind a project so big, it's like where are you going to get millions of dollars? The cattle the silver, the gold, the earth belongs to him. And he gave it to me and you as an inheritance. Our needs will be met. Amen? Ways to give her on the screen. Whatever's way is easier for you. Pick which works for you best. Let me pray over it. But I've been saying this and saying this and saying this. Got to claim what you need. Till you claim it, can't have access to it. Tell, tell, out loud, tell the Lord. I'm believing God for, I don't know, Five grand, ten grand, twenty grand, out of debt, needs are met, payroll. I don't know what you're believing God for. You do. Cars, house, whatever it is. You got needs. Simple stuff, right? Food, groceries on the table. Maybe that's where you're at. Light bill. I don't know. Help me. Help me with my tithing. Help me with my giving. Help me with my increase. Believe it. Expect it. Claim it. I claim it now in Jesus' name. Twenty, thirty, forty thousand. I don't know. Out of debt. Claim it. Jesus' name, and tell the devil, devil, take your hands off my money. It doesn't belong to you. It's not your money. He's a thief. Nothing in the earth belongs to the enemy. Everything in the earth belongs to you. Even though the earth is cursed, you're blessed, and when you come in with the blessing, it overrides the curse, and you take the resources out of this system, and you bring them into the kingdom. So right there, take your hands off my money in Jesus' name. And then what do we do? We loose the angels of heaven. That's Hebrews 1.14. Go get my money. Go get my stuff. Go now in Jesus' name. 
Bring it to me now. And then we thank the Lord for what He's done. Thank you, Father, for meeting my needs. Thank you, Father, for supplying my wants. Thank you for being faithful. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we've been talking about being an heir, talking about receiving your inheritance. A couple of Sundays ago, I talked about receiving your inheritance, and I wanted to kind of like piggyback that because sometimes we're, you know, we're like, um, we're right in line with the Sunday morning service. So I want you to look at Galatians 4, 6, and 7. Galatians 4, 6, and 7. Um, King James is great. You became an heir the moment you became saved. Now watch this. And because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. <clears throat> He's your father. Boom, seven. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. Wow. Now that's the new birth. The new birth created sonship. Within the sonship is the heirship of God. And it happens through Jesus Christ. See, so there's the position. Jesus Christ gave me the seat at the table. What he did. You and I became an heir to the fortune of God the day you got born again. You were born into the richest family on the face of the earth, man. I'm telling you, listen to me. Okay? You're born into royalty. You're born into deity. You're born into spirituality. You're born in the Godhead. You are a part of forever an inheritance, incorruptible, unbreakable, unchangeable. And until you can fully comprehend that, you might not see the benefit of it, even though it's yours. So what do these words kind of mean sometimes? You know, I've been throwing it around for like the last month, and I like to just touch base. An heir is one who receives an inheritance by birth. That's how you got it. You didn't earn it. You know, have you ever seen this? And I've seen this. Um, I've seen kids inherit wealth um, and they don't deserve it. You know what I mean? There's no other way to say it. You know what I mean? They're not even there for the, for their for their family. They're not even there. And I'm not knocking on nobody. They're not even there for the ones that are leaving them this. But guess what? It was because of birth. It wasn't because of works. Now I'm not saying that in a negative. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm just telling you what I saw. You know, I got I got somebody that um couple months ago called me up told me something was going down and I said man I said uh they're gonna they're you've been good to them people um they're gonna bless you you've been born into a royal family you're an heir to our father's kingdom it's my father's it's not the earth's it's not the devil's it's not this so we got this thing by birth and we're gonna look at this thing in um a little bit but um like, uh, you want to look at First Peter 3 and 4? King James is great. First Peter 3. First, I'm sorry. My bad. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again. Born. Born into this thing. Begotten. To a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the new birth. To an inheritance that is what? Incorruptible. Can't be tainted. Undefiled. Can't mess it up. Doesn't fade away. Okay? Okay? reserved for you in heaven, the people who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. And when you see that reserved in heaven, I don't want you to get your mind heavenly minded. The kingdom of heaven is in you right now. This is for manifestation in the earth. So that's why when you look at 
Romans 8, 14 through 17, and we can go there, you start seeing this union together is part of this airship is this perfect covenant. This perfect covenant cannot be broken by actions. You know what I mean? Like, um, I mean, you can walk away from it, it's not, but you know what I'm trying to say. It was given not based on your performance. It was given by faith, and you access it by faith. So look at Romans 8, 14. We read this a hundred times by now, but it's good you see it again and again and again because I want to explain this joint heir thing. We are joint heirs with Jesus, okay? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons of God brings access to the blessing of God, right? For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. Abba sounds just like what we read in Galatians, right? Abba, Father. Abba means Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Identification as being the Son is key to your heirship. If you don't know who you are, you act like a servant. Even though I'm Lord of all. Look at this. And if children then, heirs, and if heirs of God, join heirs with Jesus. What's a joint heir? Someone in union together with an inheritor. So the easiest way to figure this out, remember we talked about it, would be like a husband and a wife. Right? So like, just say like me, right? Pastor Liz. Okay? I'm married to Pastor Liz, obviously. So just say she got an inheritance from an uncle. I never even met half her family. You know what I mean? I only know so many of them. If somebody left her a million dollars, they left me a million dollars. They don't even know me. They ain't never seen me. But guess what? Because I'm joined to her, if she gets a million bucks, I get a million bucks. You see it? It's an inheritance based upon what? Relationship with the inheritor. We are a relationship with Jesus Christ through the new birth, that we are a joint heir. Together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. That's what the NLT says. Isn't that wild? You, we got NLT? Can we look at that in the, uh, NLT, Romans 8, 14, 17? These are my notes. My notes are all over the place. I got so many pages of notes with this thing. I got to come time to navigate through it. I don't even know what I'm using. So thank God Grant is running on the fly with me here today. For, yeah, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Now watch this. So you have not received a, a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's Spirit when he calls you what? His children. Now we call him Abba Father. Wow, okay. He affirms. Look at this. For his Spirit joins us, Right? For his spirit joins with our spirit to confirm that we are the God's children, right? Now look at this. And since we are God's children, praise be the Lord, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Wow. Wow. Together with Christ, we are what? Heirs of God's glory. But if we are what? To share his glory, we also must share his sufferings. That's big because what it's saying is you actually share this position. So huge how much responsibility God gave the church and how much honor he gave the church. He said he shared his glory. That's his presence, man. In fact, together we are heirs of God's glory. I'm an inheritor of the glory of God. Jesus, good God. So look at Ephesians 2, 6, and 7 in the AMP. Just the straight AMP, the AMP. Um, powerful, man. Powerful stuff. Ephesians, this, this is where you're supposed to be living. And he raised this up. Look at this. And he raised us up together with him when we believe and seated us with him in heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus 
See that? We're seated in heavenly places in Christ. And he did this so that in the ages to come, he might clearly show the immeasurable and unsurpassed riches of his grace and his kindness. Wow. Toward us in Christ Jesus by providing redemption. Isn't that awesome? Right? Now, if you look in um, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, King James is great. Look at this. It talks about speaking to you in times past. Right? God, who at sundry times and device manners, spoke in times past by the fathers, by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his son. Wow. Right? That son whom he had pointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Wow. So let me ask a question. If Jesus is heir of all things, and we are a joint heir with Jesus, then we must be made what? Heirs of all things. We're heirs of everything. Wow. And that's something? That's that, that's that Galatians, um, that Galatians 4, 7. Um, you want to see that? Um, put that in the, um, if you want to look at Galatians 4, 7 in the NLT, it's kind of funny because we are heirs of everything, it says. But NLT and then message sounds really cool. Give them a couple of looks at it. It's Bible study, you know. Get a look. Uh, now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you're his child, he has made you what? His heir. Wow. Wow. He made you his heir, and everything belongs to you. You see that in the message. The message 4-7 says that you are complete access. Look at this one. This is awesome stuff, man. But when the time arrived that he was set, that was set, excuse me, by God the Father, God sent his son born among of a woman, right? Born under the conditions of the law that he might redeem those of us who have what? Been kidnapped by the law. Thus, we have been what? Set free to experience our rightful heritage. Wow. Wow. You could tell for sure that you're now fully adopted as his own children of God. He sent the spirit saying, Papa, Father, does doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave but a child, and if a child, you're an heir with complete access to the inheritance. Man, you got complete access to the inheritance of God. So what's that mean? The full scope of God's provision. Everything. Spirit, soul, body, Everything has been given. Because he set up everything for you. All spiritual blessings are waiting for you in heavenly places. You know this stuff. You know that. It's been there for you. Waiting for you. Look at Ephesians 1.3 in the NLT. Ephesians 1.3. Just reads a little different. It's good that you read this stuff. I like this word. You know, and then we talk. Remember we talk about bequeath? He bequeathed it to you. I mean, not kind of terminology we use a lot. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. See that? Doesn't that real? Boom. Why? Because I'll tell you why. Because we are what? He blessed us with every, because we were united with Christ. We're one with Christ. So if he gave it to Jesus, he gave it to me. If he gave it to me, he gave it to Jesus. Right? I think it's big gave you these precious promises. Gave you this blessing of God. That's my big thing. Bequeath. That's a word we don't usually use. To give or leave by will. Especially use the property. Look, you want to see this? If you look at um, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, amp, just a straight amp. Stuff gets like um, real, really clear. Just keeps reading. All these different translations really start making sense. 
because we see it in different, um, it expounds it, you know what I mean? I think it just makes it, oh, I got that. It just gives you a different angle to look at a constant truth. The different, tra- let me say something about this. The different translations aren't a problem. It's the context of truth is there. It just gives you a different window to look at it to solidify the truth that you've already established. And some of the stuff, if it's too far out, I don't use it. But you know what I mean? But it's you, it's right there. For the for look at it says for His divine power. Now you better you got to absorb this for you. This is what happened to you. Okay. His divine power bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Wow. Through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Whoa. Whoa. Look at verse 4, though. For by these he may bestow on us his precious and magnificent promise is right? They're inexpressible in value. You can't even put a label on this stuff, dude. So that by them you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world because of what? Distributable desire and become sharers of the, boom, divine nature. It's all laid up. So if his divine power is giving you everything you need, it's waiting for you. What's what's your life going to look like when you start expecting the greatest blessings of God to show up each and every day because great grace is upon you each and every day? You know what I mean? It's a mindset. We're waiting to get it. Jesus already said he gave it to you. You don't got to wait to get free. He said you are free. You don't got to wait to get the breakthrough. He said you already got the breakthrough. See what I'm saying? It's a mentality like we're trying to get something we already have. You ever lose something? Like you ever lose your keys? You know, but they're in the house. So let me ask you a question. Did you really lose the keys? No, you misplaced the keys. If you lost them, they wouldn't be now. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, they're in the house. It's not like some, you know, you went out and, you know, you left them at the mall. That's not what I'm talking about. But you've, we've all been here, right? Something's misplaced in the house. Your laptop, your iPad, something, right? So now you're not like, Oh man, I lost it. You're just like, dang, I misplaced it. Where is that thing? You've been there, you know. Like you're like, one time, one time, you know, I got these little cheaters. I think I told you this story, and I kid you not, I'm looking all around for these things, and these stinking things were hanging off my neck. You know, like you hang your things, you know, you hang them on your shirt, but you can't feel them, and they're little, and you don't see them. And I'm looking around, looking around, looking around, looking around, and I don't know what I did. Like ten minutes later. You know, I was I was like, where are those things, man? I just had them. And there they were hanging on my neck. Did I lose them? I misplaced them. Did I lose the car keys? No, I just misplaced them. Did I lose did I lose the laptop? No, I just misplaced it. Now sometimes I know what you're saying. It's the same thing with this inheritance. It's yours. You just gotta properly place it, otherwise you're gonna do without it, even though it's yours. Wow. So you're saying to me, I'm living beneath. Look what it says, last one, New King James, Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Last one. This is good, man. New King James reads kind of just a little cleaner. And I like this, man, because look what it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all his everything. That's the scripture you use after you ate at the dinner table. Before, you know, you when you forgot to pray. So, you know, you didn't pray over the food. And then you show up and you're like, oh, darn, man, we started eating the bread. You, pr- you pray this prayer. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, man, that's funny. You got to laugh a little. You never heard that before? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget now all his benefits. Wow, I like that, right? Okay, here we go. Three. Wow. Who forgives all your iniquities, heals all your disease. Wow, wow. 
who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that what? Your youth is renewed like the eagle. Wow, I like that. Right? Ain't that good stuff? That's right? That's the, wait a minute now. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He did forgive. He did heal. He did renew. He did it already. What's going to start happening when you start magnifying the blessings you already have and expecting them to manifest each and every day of your life? Not like, oh, I can't wait to tomorrow. I might get it. Get up and go, I got it. I can't wait for tomorrow. I'm going to walk in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like going like, oh, I'm waiting for the package in the mail. No, 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 no. The, the, the stuff's in the mailbox. Go open the package. Each and every day, he loadeth you up with the benefits. There is a blessing in each and every day for your life. So the takeaway is this. We're not living like we got to get it. We got to start living from the mental perspective of I got it. Now I got to manifest and walk in it. Changes the whole perspective of faith. Because now it's not I got to get it. Now it's I got it. Let me go walk in it. Changes faith's direction forever. Come on, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these guys. I thank you that their life of an heir, their understanding of who they are, what they could do, how they could do it has gone to a whole other level. And I thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, you're going to speak to them loud and clear about what they've been made, what they've been given, what they've been man able to manifest in the earth, and how to transform their life forever in this message about the blessing, the heir, the inheritor, and the fullness thereof of everything you have for them. Thank you for keeping them and watching over them, Lord. And bless them from each and every day forward. In Jesus' mighty name, open the eyes of their understanding and let them see and know greater than before. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord, guys. Man, I'm so excited about this series. Come Sunday morning, 9 and 1030. Invite somebody. We're so excited about what's going on here. I told you, man, Easter was phenomenal. We're seeing growth each and every week. The church is growing and growing. It's growing because you're inviting people. It's growing because you're going to get them. It's growing. We had the best men's meeting we just had. It's awesome. People registered early. I want you to get ready for the Ladies Connect group. Together is going to be meeting. Stay updated. Here comes some stuff. Don't click off. Stay on. Get some updates. Find out what's going on at Relevant News. And I love you. I'm going to see you Sunday, 9 and 1030. God bless you, and we'll see you then.